Welcome to the NNJR student class for Mid-Ohio. Our topic today is going to be how to avoid mistakes. Now, of course, mistakes are a natural part of learning and something that all of us make when we're driving. So today we're really gonna talk about some common mistakes, uh, how to avoid the worst kind, and how to use the rest as a learning uh, tool, if you will. So without further ado, let me call up some slides here and uh, welcome you officially to uh, a continuation of our Trackside Classroom series. Today, how to recognize and correct mistakes. Now, of course, we have the normal disclaimer that uh, if you try anything that I'm going to talk about today and it doesn't work out, <clears throat> it's your fault. Same kind of language that all of the waivers we all signed to go on track say. Um, so what we're gonna talk about today, how mistakes are a natural part of learning, some common mistakes, some potentially serious ones, although probably not as serious as the one in the photo here, uh, Specifically, we're going to talk about how to deal with too early and too fast, some situational awareness issues and fatigue. And along the way, we'll talk about skills you can develop to avoid mistakes or minimize the consequences. Now, of course, most of you have heard the quote from Sterling Moss that I never drove a perfect lap. And if he never drove one, I can guarantee you that I never did and that you never did and probably won't either. So <clears throat> what does that mean? Well, what it really means is that they're natural and we have to accept that we will make, make mistakes and treat it <clears throat> instead of negative as a positive, treat it as a learning opportunity. Also be aware of the mistake and keep it small and keep it single. In our winter seminars, Peter Krauss talked about how large mistakes usually result from an accumulation of small ones. So keeping mistakes small and single is a great uh, tip. Of course, we want to recognize it and move on by taking whatever corrective action. And also, if you're thinking back on a session and you're saying, gee, I'm really bad at something or I really screwed up the, you know, that corner, change that language around, turn it into I'm working on that corner, I'm working on my braking technique, I'm working on getting my turn in precise, whatever it is, turn it into a positive. And then if you need to think about how to specifically work on that particular skill. Another aspect uh, that's really important on track is we have to stay mentally focused. Uh, this is not a place where our mind can wander. So you need to recognize if you're losing focus or thinking about what you screwed up in the last corner, you got to dismiss that. Give yourself a key phrase that you use or a word that you use to get yourself refocused. Eyes up is a common one that just tell yourself eyes up as a mental memory jogger to get the focus back in place. Now, we all know the basics of track. Well, I shouldn't say that. This is a class for students. So let me cover some of the basics. Uh, <clears throat> we know there's a line around the track uh, where we're on the gas. You see in green here, we break, <coughs> we turn and then we get back on the gas again. And that line starts with a place where we get on the brakes, but the corner itself is determined by the three reference points where we often have cones, the turn in point, an apex, and a track out point. Now, of course, if you just drew straight lines between those, you wouldn't really have an arc. So it's really an arc, but these are the basics, right? Uh, so we're going to use this diagram you know, to illustrate some points in, in a couple of minutes. As we're driving around the track, we kind of get into a rhythm if we're uh, uh, 
once we've kind of got the basics of the line figured out, we accelerate on the straights, we get on the brakes, uh, we release some of the brakes, we turn, and then we come off the rest of the brakes. And then we repeat that process. Uh, maybe some corners there's less brake or more brake or just a lift, but it's the same process, that, that, that rhythm around, around the track. So what are the common mistakes that we see? Well, um, improper braking sequence is a common one, um, meaning we students often brake too little at the beginning and too much at the end. Uh, inconsistent corner entry speed, often because the braking isn't consistent. Uh, jumping on and off the gas pedal in a turn, not being aware of traffic, and as a result, having passes being poorly timed. Uh, these are all things that are common and while, while I suppose could be serious, really aren't serious in the sense that they're dangerous. And these are also things that your instructor has seen a hundred times before and will work with you on. So these are clear learning opportunities that you know are not to be worried about, if you will. Uh, if you you know are jumping on and off the gas pedal and not being smooth, trust me, your instructor is going to help you uh, smooth that out. If you're having trouble with traffic, your instructor is going to help you with the traffic and so on. But there are some more potentially serious mistakes. The biggest one being driving too fast for whatever reason. <clears throat> um, it could be a, a, a driver simply not recognizing that they're all, all of a sudden going five or 10 or more miles an hour entering a corner than they were the last time. Uh, inconsistent entry speed can, you know, can contribute to that. And Sometimes, not often, but sometimes student drivers will try to go out and drive, quote, fast, which, of course, is one of the dumbest mistakes that, that we can make. <clears throat> now, sometimes even when not trying to drive fast or, or overdriving, if you will, drivers will apex the corner early and not recognize it. And we're going to talk more about that. That is a potentially serious mistake. And of course, <clears throat> if something happens on the track and we're not anticipating it, if we don't see a flag or if we don't see some, some oil spilled on the track, that can be dangerous. And an insidious, it's not really a mistake, but something that we have to become aware of is what our body is telling us. Because if we get fatigued on the track, that can be potentially dangerous. Now, when do we want to recognize mistakes? Early, really early, whether that's in a turn, a braking zone, a skid, mechanical failure. Um, from a driving point of view, Skip Barber puts it the best. If you're any good, the instant you turn your hands into the corner, you know if you've made a mistake. That deals with the uh, too fast or too early or any of those kinds of things. Uh, in you know entering a corner and, and the probably the most common situation. So let's talk about <clears throat> you know what early means and what we can do about it. <clears throat> now here you see in the dashed line in black kind of the, the normal line through the corner and you see an even later line drawn in blue with a later turn in, a later apex and a later track out. Uh, this may not be optimum, but it's perfectly safe and nothing to worry about. So if you turn in a bit later, then, uh, then you should. Uh, generally, that's not an issue. Uh, but that doesn't happen very often because generally speaking on the track, we turn in much later than we're used to on the street. So our tendency, in fact, is to tend, turn in early, <clears throat> much, you know, sometimes well before where we should with the reference turn in. So here you see in blue, uh, a line where the driver has, has gone in early, turned in early, apexed early. <clears throat> and notice what happens when we get up toward track out. We now all of a sudden have to make a very sharp turn to stay on track. Well, if we're going slow enough, that works, but oftentimes we're not. So. Let's talk about why early apex is really a bad thing, um, because what we've shown here only works if we're going um, uh, slow enough. 
<clears throat> if we're able to uh, anticipate that we're into this corner too fast or too early, then <clears throat> we could potentially drive the car off following the orange line on the chart here and avoid anything that's on the outside. Not usually, there's often trees usually though, they have tire walls or aren't going in front of them. So I, I put it there just to make the point that, uh, you know, we, we want to stay near the track. Now that orange line is what a driver who anticipates that they've made a mistake can do. But the more common situation with drivers with less experience is that they only recognize the mistake late and they lift at, at a, some point around the apex of the corner or just after it. And then the car spins and hits whatever is on the inside of the corner. Uh, obviously a bad situation. So what does it mean to recognize a mistake early? <clears throat> if we wanna follow the orange line, uh, then we have to recognize the mistake at turn in. Remember Skip Barber's comments. You need to recognize, be aware at turn in, whether you're on your normal line at your normal pace. If we are, then we can adjust. We might even be able to slow down enough to follow the blue line. And if not, we can drive the car off and follow the orange line. And yes, we might be dropping some wheels in the dirt, even all four wheels, but you know, that's generally speaking, a fairly safe thing to do and, uh, and, and the smart thing to do. However, as I said before, if we don't recognize the mistake until later around the apex of the corner, now it's too late. Um, uh, it, well, it's too late if we, if we lift. We could still at that point recognize the mistake and avoid lifting and drive straight off. Now we're gonna go off at a higher rate of speed, which isn't good, but it's still better than lifting. But our instincts take over if we're not careful and we lift. So again, the message here, recognize what's happening at turn in. So some skills to develop. Since that turn in point is so important, really focus on being consistent at your turn in point and your turn in speed. Um, and really focus on that reference. And that includes what angle is the car at immediately after you turn in. If you've turned in and now all of a sudden the car, you know, isn't behaving the way it did before for whatever reason, and not looking in this, the, your, your mental, your, your rather your sight picture, what you're seeing in your vision is different, that should set off alarm bells as well. And avoid being distracted by the previous corner. Even if you totally messed up the previous corner, you have to forget it for now and focus on the corner that you're in. These are all skills that as you're developing your driving skills on track that you really have to get good at. So let's talk about situational awareness, being aware of what's going on around you. Uh, that starts with traffic. Um, that means we got to look in the mirrors, have the mirrors adjusted properly. If you've watched some of my previous classes, you know I harp on having the side mirrors adjusted so that you do not have a blind spot. Um, so that you can be aware of the cars ahead and behind. Uh, that means that you can therefore pick the correct time and place to pass or be passed. Also in situational awareness, flag stations. Um, create a habit to look at every flag station, not just when you drive past it, but as soon as you can see it in the distance. Most flag stations can be seen well before you're abreast of them, and that's when you want to first look. Be a student of the track surface. Be aware if something's different. And of course, be sensitive to your car. Is there a strange noise? Does something feel different than it did last time? If there is, then again, you know, react to that and pull in and check to see what's going on. So some skills to develop. We've talked before about vision, you know, focusing ahead using glances or scanning to look at mirrors and so on. You need to develop your concentration so that you can make a mental note of the cars behind you, 
but have that not affect the driving that you're doing. Same with the cars in front, of course. Um, we want a mental picture of what the flag station normally looks like. Uh, is same for the track surface, so that if there's any difference from normal, uh, you know, it sets off an alarm bell. And again, I can't repeat enough, flag stations as soon as you can see them, as well as when you're uh, close. And being aware of the car and the feel, the smell, the 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 uh, sounds, all of those are important things to pay attention to. Last but not least is fatigue. Um, you know, if you start making you know multiple mistakes, two in a row, three in a lap, uh, you didn't see some upcoming traffic, or you're all of a sudden less consistent. Obviously, something's going on. Um, certainly if you feel overheated or cramping or, or fatigue, that's telling you in no uncertain terms, it's time to uh, pull into the paddock and uh, take a break. And especially if you find yourself coming off the track or waking up, so to speak, after a few laps and not remembering what happened, again, uh, time to pull in. So to summarize, uh, everyone makes mistakes but we want you to use them as a learning opportunity. We want you to be aware of the ones that can be dangerous so that uh, you identify early that you've made a serious mistake and can turn it into a not very serious mistake. Situational awareness is really essential. That is perhaps one of the biggest surprises to drivers as they start to learn on track is how much there is to learn about things that don't have anything to do with the line, but they have to do with what's going on with traffic, with flags, with the track condition, and with your car. And of course, we want to watch out for fatigue. I hope you can take away one or two or three things to focus on at Mid-Ohio and at your next uh, event, and that none of us you know, experience any serious mistakes and that we all find a nice way to turn small mistakes into driving improvement. So with that said, uh, I'm going to talk about Mid-Ohio turn by turn. Um, there's a track map on the website. If you find the one originally from Ross Bentley, it has different corner numbers for what's called the pro course. We'll be running what's often called the club course that uses the chicane that's marked here uh, in with corner numbers two, three, and four. And so, uh, so these are the corner numbers we'll, we'll be using and that we'll be driving at, 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 at Mid-Ohio. Passing zones, um, oops. Uh, passing zones uh, on, the, uh, on the front straight, the pit straight is on the left side between turns one and two, uh, early on the left, passing early on the left, late on the right. Um, the main straight in the back, the back straight is a passing zone on the right side. Um, that means a car giving a pass needs to stay left going through the kink. And then there's a passing zone uh, in Thunder Valley between 11 and 12 on the right side. Now these are for the lower run groups. Uh, these are the passing zones. Uh, black and red will have expanded passing, but in uh, in all other groups, uh, these are these are the passing zones. So let's take a lap around uh, around the track. Um, I will admit right up front that I'm a bit rusty on Mid Ohio, so I'm sure some of you will have some finer points or questions I've not covered, and uh, I apologize in advance about that. Um, but I'm going to cover the basics here. So for those of you new to Mid-Ohio or only been there once before, hopefully this will be a reminder for those who have been there before and uh, some tips for those uh, who, are, who are new. Turn one is the fastest corner on the track at the end of the pit straight. Uh, and uh, we turn into it underneath the bridge. We apex the curb that separates track out or pit out rather from the track. And we want to we want to apex some distance along that curb, but near the end of it. I don't like the way the line's drawn in this particular uh, uh, drawing. Uh, I think it shows the apex a bit too early. 
Um, this is a fast corner, but it does go, there is a bit off of off camber and dip in the middle. So it does get your attention, uh, but a fun corner executed uh, well. As we approach, uh, you know, there's a breaking zone. Uh, depending on how fast you're going, th this may not require a lot of break or it may require some, but in any case, it's, it's a, a corner where we do not want to use heavy break. We want to use what's called brush braking because we don't want to upset the car unduly entering a fast corner. The turn in is about the bridge abutment. Um, you know, the car on the left here has just taken a pass. So, um, and, and in the photo, we're just about at the turn in point. And it looks like the car is not all the way to the right in this photo, uh, which is where it should be uh, for, the, for the turn in. Here's that apex curb that we want to run along for maybe the last half or third um, uh, uh, before we begin to track out. Now, the next complex is um, quite busy, <clears throat> but actually a lot of fun. This is the chicane that leads into the keyhole um, and <clears throat> really uh, <clears throat> not as hard to drive as you might think, uh, because we basically yeah, are on the gas you know, past the, you know, the apex of, of turn two, what's called turn two here, that first curb on the right. And then once the car is straight aimed at uh, the, the first curbing there in, in turn three, we brake to slow down some. And then we get back on the gas and carry speed all the way up uh, to the keyhole marked as turn four here. And once we're into the corner, um, well, let me say it, let me back up one step. As we approach turn four, it's actually uphill a little bit. And so it helps us break and slow down. And we want to kind of bend, and I often describe it as throw the car up into the turn over that little rise uh, right at the entrance to uh, the keyhole. Um, so, because we want to kind of carry as much speed as we can into the first half here because we can't do a lot there until we set up the second half. Here's what it looks like approaching the chicane, uh, full, on the, full on the gas at this point. Um, well, let me back up. There's, you can, it's hard to see, but there is a turn-in cone here to help us see the turn-in for, uh, you know, for this corner. Um, <clears throat> we can drive right over this, this curb and straighten out the, uh, the uh, oops, I mean, straighten out the uh, area where we want to break, uh, which is right after where the yellow car is here. <clears throat> here is that little rise as we approach the keyhole. And uh, as I said before, we can break right into this little rise. And then we want to bend and throw the car you know, right up onto the, uh, onto the corner. Here's the beginning of the keyhole. And you can see there's, that the curb is, uh, is often used here and it's friendly, so, uh, so certainly can, can be used. We have to have a lot of patience. This is a very long corner. The first half or two thirds, um, we're basically carrying whatever momentum we can. We wanna have a little bit of gas on to carry that momentum and to use the gas to steer the car. And there's a bump about half to two thirds of the way through we really can't uh, get the car pointed and do what we want to do until after that bump. And it, it, it's, it's not a big issue, but it's, it does actually help us, uh, remind us, the bump does, of where we want to be before we set up the exit here. So as we get further around now, <clears throat> about where the yellow car is, you can see some patches and, and that's, that's where people are, are fin you know, it, you know finishing the corner, if you will, or setting up the apex. It would be a better way to put it. Here you can see, you know, you can literally see the line that you want to follow. And again, we can use the apex curbing here, uh, setting up the exit because we, we want to get on the gas as soon and as hard as we can. But guess what? If we're impatient here, we get on the gas too soon and then uh, we have to come out of it. So again, Patience is required to set this up. At the end of 
<clears throat> the back straight are, is turn seven followed by eight and nine. Um, and eight is uh, called madness properly. Some people have incorrectly called it the jump turn, but it does, it is, uh, it does have a big hill in the middle of it, as, as we'll see. But first, let's start with turn seven at the end of the back straight. Um, obviously, it's a heavy braking zone. Uh, it, it, we're highest speeds on the track are, are entering this corner. Um, fortunately, this corner is banked, and so we can carry pretty good speed through it. Um, but we're approaching it very quickly, so it does require uh, uh, a lot of brake uh, be, to set it up. Um, <clears throat> so this is what it looks like entering the braking zone. I want to point out a couple things here. It's downhill. We're going as fast as we're going to go at mid-Ohio, at which in most cars, we're moving pretty good. So we want to break earlier than we think uh, for this corner, because not only is it downhill, it's bumpy. And, um, and many cars have misjudged this and ended up in the gravel trap that's just outside, uh, well, just at the end uh, of the straight here, outside of turn seven. So we want to break early and earlier than we think to get slowed down for seven. Here is the turn in. Turn seven is a nice corner. It has good banking. Um, you know, we can use the apex curb and we, and we want to track out left and stay there. Um, in the past, well, let me say it differently. We can make turn eight easier by not tracking all the way out left, but that means we have to take turn seven quite a bit slower. And so most of us have concluded that the correct line here is to, is to book through turn seven at good pace not try to get the car back to the right. Just let the car track out uh, you, you know, from the momentum in turn seven and follow the hill up, uh, on the left side up to the apex of, of eight. So eight again is, is the, has the hill in it and the apex is, is actually a little before the top. Uh, we're gonna run right along that apex curb uh, that you see here in, in the photo and uh, and then start to track out as we go over the top of the hill. Now, as we go over the top of the hill, you know, we're going to relax the steering and uh, out to the right, but we, we want to bring it, the car back to the left to set up turn nine. So we, we want to kind of make this an arc. Yes, we want to track out, but we want to let that arc, we don't want to track out all the way. We want to let a natural arc occur to bring us back to the left. So here's the approach at the bottom of, of the hill uh, as we approach turn, turn nine. You can kind of see where the line is, where the, the combination of sealer and uh, rubber is from, from other people. The apex here, let me back up. This corner looks on the track map like pretty much like a 90 degree corner. And if we drive it that way, we're, we're gonna end up uh, driving it too quickly because what we really wanna do is get the car pointed at the left side of the bridge. Well, may, more like the middle of the bridge actually. And to do that, we have to follow that apex curbing around a long ways. And we don't, we, which, and, which also means we don't wanna track out very far from turn nine. So this is another corner that requires a lot of patience because if we overdrive this corner, we completely mess up the following sequence of S's, turns 10A and 10B. So yes, we want to get the car turned, rotated and turned as, what, as quickly as we can. So it's a good corner to trail break in for most cars. But we also want to be patient, uh, let the car turn, be patient getting to the gas because if we get the gas too early, we're going to push the car out left, and then we're not going to be able to carry speed through um, through the S's. So here are the S's, 10A and 10B, um, and we want to treat that as more or less as a straight, even though it's not. That requires modulating the throttle, probably not foot on the floor in most cars, um, but you know, lot, but quick nonetheless. 10B, we generally want to stay a foot or so off uh, the apex curbing to help us 
line up the break zone for 11, which comes up very fast after, after 10B. So here's the, the 10A corner, and you know, we're gonna be on the gas, maybe on, maybe on the floor, maybe not, but we're gonna be you know, booking through here at a, at a pretty good pace. Now notice that it's blind to get to 10B. Um, the road's gonna bend back to the right over the hill there. Uh, and now you see the apex curving at 10B that we generally wanna stay a bit off of. Um, uh, although the biggest issue here isn't that there's a problem if we're in on that curbing here, the, the issue is what happens in our braking zone for 11, uh, because we do have to slow down to set up 11 and, um, and we do need to be able to brake and ideally in a straight line. Now turn 11 deserves great respect. Uh, it begins on camber and uphill, and then it goes off camber and downhill. So, um, so if you're not in the prop, on the proper line or at the proper speed, it can really catch you out. Um, and we definitely want to respect uh, you know, the track out, unwind and track out. It's not a corner to lift in the middle of, for sure. So here's that approaching that braking zone for 11. And ideally, we'd like to get over to the left here and break in a straight line. That's generally hard to do if we're carrying speed in here. So second best to that is to you know, break in a straight line as best we can and make the turn in a touch sharper uh, at, at the, near the end of the uh, left-hand curbing here. Here's the apex of, of 11. We can use the curb here. We, in fact, we want to use it, and we and uh, we want to follow it for some distance up the hill, uh, you know, to uh, you know to execute this corner properly. Here is track out, um, and notice there isn't a lot of room for error at track out here. So we really do want to be under control at, at this point. You can see turn twelve in the distance just past the bridge on the right. Um, that turn really doesn't um, uh, require any braking or any modulation of the gas. Um, 13 comes up right after it. We do want to follow tr the track on the left side as we exit 11 all the way up to the bridge uh, because this is a passing zone on the right side. You can give a pass on the right. Um, immediately at the bridge, we, we do want to start to move to the right to set up 13. So here's 12 and 13. Um, but again, 13 is the, the key part. Um, the turn in for 13 is somewhere around the 100 foot marker. Um, the apex here is kind of early to mid curb on 13. Uh, 13 is very fast, not as fast as one, but it's a fast corner. And, but it does go off camber at track out. So um, it, it, it's a corner where we can run out of road if we're not on the correct line. Here are those markers I mentioned, um, you know, that tell us uh, that we're approaching uh, 13. Again, you can see at this point uh, we, that the apex of 13 is actually blind, um, uh, just over the, over the rise there. Uh, here's the apex curb. We want to run along it for some distance uh, to set up, set up the exit. Fun corner, but again, deserves respect. Now, last but not least, in a lap around mid Ohio is the carousel. Um, and you can see the shape of it on the diagram here. We're approaching it from the right side of the track almost immediately after we've tracked out of 13, we're getting ready to set up for 14. And there's a rise or a hill that we're gonna break into to, we're gonna use that to you know, slow the car down. Then we have to relax the brakes uh, over that hill and then perhaps get back on them again um, a little bit harder at the bottom as we bend the car to the right. And using the brakes that way can help the car turn as well. Um, the other thing here is we really have to sacrifice 14 to set up 15. So that means we have to stay tight on the curbing in 14 as well as be patient uh, to set up 15. It's very easy. Many people overdrive 14, especially as they're learning the track. So 
here we are approaching, it's a little hard to see in this photo, I guess the rise, but there, there, is, a, there is a good rise here that uh, right after where the white line bends to the right, that uh, is very useful to help slow the car down. This is just after we've gone over that rise and they're starting to come down. Um, we're, you know, we've had to relax the brakes over the hill. We can get on them again, as I said, but we really wanna get the car bending to the right as much as we can, as soon as we can. And we can actually see the line or the, the patch or sealer here where everybody's driven um, you know, to, set up, uh, to set up 14. <clears throat> We're gonna be tight on this curb, we can be right up on it um, and definitely requires patience. This is a long corner, it's much like the keyhole where you know, we really have to be patient uh, you know, through here in order to set up the second half. Uh, here we're kind of exiting uh, 14, but you see we're still, um, we can, at, the, at about this point, we can start to feed some gas on, but if it's too much gas, we're going to push ourselves to the left, which is not where we want to be. This is where we want to be. Uh, we, we can be on the gas, you know, pretty aggressively uh, by this point in most cars. Um, but if we don't, uh, if, if we overdrive 14, that won't happen. So to summarize Mid-Ohio, uh, turn one is fast, fastest corner on the track, slow hands in, into, uh, into turn one. Um, common mistake is to break too late for turn seven and the sand there is called China Beach, uh, and it will beat your car, I can guarantee it. Um, turn 11, we talked about needs great respect because of that hill and then uh, going over that hill and the car getting light and so on. And keyhole and carousel will certainly require your, your patience. But uh, all of that said, Mid-Ohio is a fantastic track. Uh, it is uh, one of my favorites and one of many people's favorites. A couple of just comments on the surface. Um, the surface is generally described as relatively low grip, but the big issue with the surface is in the wet. It is diabolically slippery in the wet. The track surface has been polished for many years and like other tracks where that's happened, it makes driving in the wet very, very tricky. So if you decide to drive at Mid-Ohio in the damp, um, you were warned. Um, we've had incidents happen where people did not give the track enough respect. It can be done, yes, but it requires um, very delicate use of the controls and great respect for the track. With all of that said, I hope you have a great event at uh, Mid-Ohio. And I'm just sorry that I can't join you there this year, but I certainly hope to be there very soon. Have a safe trip out and back, and I will see you soon at a track someplace with an NJR event.